Luke 24, verse 33 to 53. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and rose who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And, what, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see me, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. My family can say, and Victor can say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So I'm here with my family church. Good morning, Lavington Vineyard Church. Here with my family and with Victor, and it's a beautiful morning. And Christ is still risen. He's risen indeed. Amen. He's risen indeed. He's still risen indeed. Well, church, before we jump into the very end of our Luke series, which has been a long series in three parts over a couple years, before we get to that, I'm going to spend just a couple minutes talking to you about giving. Last year, we started this as a church where we said just three short messages on giving over the course of the year. We want to keep laying this before you to just let you know what the New Testament teaches in regard to giving. So 2 Corinthians 9, 7, where Paul says to his friends there in Corinth that each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So notice what this says. It places the decision in the heart between God and a person. There is no compulsion, no compulsion by a church, by a pastor, by some false sense of duty where you feel like it earned you something with God, but it's there a decision in the heart between God and a person. But then it talks about making a decision. So following through on that decision. So if you're a single person, perhaps what it looks like for you is getting counsel from a trusted friend to come before your friend and the Lord and say, Here, here's my budget, and to then follow through and make a decision. So for husbands and wives, for you to talk through honestly your budget and say, here's where we're at, and let's decide together what to give. Well, then the implication is it's following through with that decision. So each of you, each of you have decided in your heart to give because it's not under compulsion. There's the desire to, to give cheerfully. And we're going to talk about that later when we talk about the principle of joy. But today, as we think about intentionality, I just want to lay this before you from God's word. And if there's any residual reluctance to come before the Lord, to bring your heart before him and to say, God, would you help me to take a step, even if it's risky, even if there will be some, some cost there. But church, 
as you know, we're not the kind of church that will do a tithe series every year, nor do we teach a strict tithe. But in the New Testament, we have these principles of intentionality, generosity, and joy. So if you have any questions about this first principle of intentionality, please let any of us elders or staff know, and we'd be happy to talk with you about it. But look, thank you, church. Thank you for the way you gave faithfully last year. At one point, we came to you and said, look, we're facing a shortfall. We know that with COVID, the pandemic, this is a strong possibility. And so we just laid the knee before you, and you guys stepped up as a church, and we actually ended the year with a surplus during a pandemic. So praise God and thank you. So we come to the end of this long, long series, and Christ is still risen. We're still in the resurrection. So there is this movie in 2008 called Doubt. And in this movie, Doubt, you have this religious community that is facing questions of scandal in relationships. There's a lot of turmoil and there's just a lot of doubt in general. And at one point, this one priest says, doubt can be a bond as powerful and sustaining as certainty. When you are lost, you are not alone. Well, the disciples, I think, were experiencing this kind of bond. They were in a place of doubt. They were hiding, so to speak, in a room. They were closed off. There had been some accounts of the resurrection, some, some uh, testimonies of the resurrection. And yet they're there experiencing this kind of bond through doubt. And yet the main point of the text that Peter read for us is that Jesus confronts their doubt and their fear. He confronts their doubt with his presence and his word. So this is actually the third resurrection appearance. So the believers are sitting there in Jerusalem, hanging out, eating fish, and swapping resurrection stories. And then, bam, Jesus appears. It's like he just shows up in the room and says, peace to you. Except that they don't feel peace, but actually fear and confusion. They, they think they've seen a spirit. And so he questions them straight away. He says, why are you troubled? In other words, why are you afraid? Why are you doubting? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? And he pinpoints the fact that doubt begins in the heart. And so straight away for us, church, I want to lay before us this challenge that our fears and doubts can easily paralyze us from experiencing mission, joy, and worship. Our doubts, fears, and doubts can easily paralyze us from experiencing mission, joy, and worship. So Jesus confronts their fear and doubt with three proofs. So the first physical proof is he says, look at my body. Like, touch me. Look at the scars. Touch me. It is I myself, he says. Not, not some other person pretending to me be to be me. This is me. And Luke tells us that they disbelieved for joy and were marveling. This is a strange phrase, disbelieved for joy. But basically means this is too good to be true. Like, this is so amazing that I can't really believe it. And so then he comes with physical proof number two, and he says, give me some of that fish. And he says, this is me, a real body. He proves that he's a real body. Now, kids, imagine that you were creating a cartoon of this scene. And to prove Jesus's point, maybe you had a spirit or a ghost in this cartoon, grab a piece of fish and try to eat it. Well, what, what do you think would happen? Well, that piece of fish would fall through that ghost-like body and hit the floor. Well, here, the only thing that really hit the floor was probably the disciples' jaws as they were just in shock because Jesus takes that piece of broiled fish, he eats it, and it doesn't drop to the floor because he has a real resurrected body. Because I don't know about you, I, I like science fiction, I like fantasy stories, and this just blows my mind. Because if you think about it, in Jesus' resurrected body, 
could either walk through walls or just show up in rooms, but also eat stuff, including broiled fish. Kids, I don't know if you like broiled fish, but Jesus ate it and it went in his real resurrected body. So here he doesn't wait for their reaction, but he goes right into a proof from scripture. He reminds them, just as he had shared with them before, that everything is written about me. So then verse 45, it says that he then opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He went on to say, thus it is written. He brings them back to the scriptures. So then in light of these proofs and revelation, he says, now go out as my witnesses. You're going to be given power to do this. But now in light of this, go out as my witnesses. And so I want to challenge us with this action step. This is a takeaway I want you to go away with from this sermon. And that's that we get in position for the Holy Spirit to open your mind to better understand the scriptures. What would it look like for you to get in position for the Holy Spirit to open your mind to better understand the scriptures? So now we're going to go into some breakout rooms in a minute, and we're going to address two sides of the doubt coin in these breakout rooms. And so just to set it up for you, the first one is that doubt can be seen or felt as a religious crime. Maybe you grew up in the kind of context where you just weren't allowed to doubt. Maybe you even asked questions and they were just squashed. Or maybe you just sensed that, you know what, if I bring up any kind of doubts I have, it's going to be seen as a religious crime. This is a phrase that a friend of mine shared with me this week about the context that he grew up in. So because of that, maybe you're afraid to share. Maybe that's you. And look, the fact is we all have them at times. Kids, maybe you're as young as four or five years old. I remember when I was seven or eight years old asking my mom some really hard questions about the Bible, about the Christian faith. So there are times where we all have doubts, we have hard questions, and we want LVC to be a safe place for that, whether you're seven or 77. But look how Jesus confronts their doubts, how he addresses them. He actually confronts their doubts. He doesn't push them away, but he invites them in, even literally, touch me. Well, the next category, so to speak, is doubt as something to hold on to. Perhaps for you, doubt is almost like a, a badge of sincerity, that it shows that you are a, a genuine Christian. So if this tends to be more you, especially at this point in your life, I wonder, do you ever doubt your doubts? Do you ever doubt your doubts? Or do you privilege your doubts? So here, Jesus questions their doubts, and he confronts them. Yes, he does it with love, but he does it head on. In fact, John records the story of when Thomas, you know, doubting Thomas, shares his big doubt. Jesus invites him once again, you know, touch me. Look, look at the scars. But then he says to Thomas, stop doubting and believe. That was actually a statement of love. Stop doubting and believe. So look, if you have doubts, you're not alone. But my question for you, just as we said, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Are you willing to trust Jesus to help you grow out of those doubts, to address them with his love? So that may include for you doing some homework, to dig more and seek out some answers. Look, not all of our questions will be answered perfectly, but there can be answers to tough questions that we have. So a step for you may be to seek out and to do some homework. But look, it's still true today that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Because he said to Thomas, hey, you, you believe, great. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And now 2,000 years later, Indeed, we don't have the risen Jesus right in front of us to see his scars, to hear his voice audibly. 
times have changed, cultures have changed, 2000 years have gone by. In many ways, it's easier to doubt, but it's still true that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. It is a blessing to grow out of our doubts and continue to have various doubts along the journey of our life, but it's a blessing to have them addressed, to grow out of them and to believe with confidence. All right, so now I'm gonna send you into your breakout rooms. And the two questions, LVC, the first one is, have you seen doubt? And your, your leader will repeat this, so don't worry. But have you seen doubt more as a religious crime or as something that has paralyzed your faith at times? Now, a couple things on this question. One is that you may have experienced both at different points in your life. So you could speak to either of them. It's not an either or. If you don't feel comfortable sharing personally, you could speak in general to how you've seen in religious communities uh, doubt portrayed as a religious crime of sorts. But uh, if you could speak personally to that of how you've faced doubt, that would be great if you could do so. And then finally, the second one, share about a time when God opened your mind to understand in a way that addressed your doubt. So just two questions for you as you go into breakout rooms. And I trust that it will be a blessing to you as you talk with brothers and sisters. So just wait patiently for the link to come up. It should appear here in a few seconds. where I'm exhausted. I don't want to be on Zoom again, but I go in there and even just to see people's faces on the screen and the discussion we're able to have even over Zoom is really encouraging. So if you're not in a home group, reach out to the church office. You can reach out to connect at lavingtonvineyard.org, connect at lavingtonvineyard.org, and we'd love to get you in a home group. So church, check out how Luke verse 52 ends. It says, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. So they go from joy in verse 41 to great joy in the very last verse. They return to Jerusalem with great joy. So the truth is we don't have to remain stuck in doubt and fear. We can move on to worship and joy. And so just to put before us one more time, consider this step even this week. What would it look like for you to get in position for the Holy Spirit to open your mind to better understand the scriptures? The film Doubt sets up doubt versus certainty. And see, I don't even think we have absolute certainty in this life. I think we can have a rock solid confidence that the Holy Spirit can give us. That's what faith is about. So it's not about doubt versus certainty. We don't have complete certainty in this life. But whether you are afraid to doubt or you would like to have your doubts addressed, let's bond together. Doubt doesn't have to be the thing that bonds us. We don't have certainty like some churches believe where that binds us together. 
but we can have a rock solid confidence that the Lord can come to us with his presence and with his word to address and to confront the doubts in our lives. Let's pray, church. Lord, I want to pray for those right now who are in a place where they have experienced the question of doubt with fear because they have seen it as a religious crime or it's been communicated to them that it's like a religious crime. And Lord, perhaps today has been a relief for them of sorts. Lord, that it has opened a door for them to come to a safe space to share with their church family any doubts they may be having. Lord, I pray that freedom would come. Lord, that your presence would come. That brothers and sisters would be the hands and feet of Jesus to be your presence and to share your word. Lord, for those who are still holding on to their doubts, I pray that you would give them the courage and even the honesty to doubt their doubts and to come before you and to come to others and to say, hey, would you help me seek some answers? Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to open our minds to better understand the scriptures. So Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are still risen, Lord Jesus. You are next to the throne at the right hand of the Father. You're interceding for us. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, now in church, in response to the fact that he is still risen, let's declare what we believe before the Lord. Our Father everlasting, the all creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God the Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life, forever seated high. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again for i believe in the name of jesus one more time i believe in god our father i believe in christ the son i believe in the holy spirit our god is three in one i believe in the resurrection that we will rise again for I believe in the name of Jesus. Can we sing that last part? Um, I believe in you. 
I believed you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of, for I believe, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Amen, church. He's still risen indeed. And in light of that, receive this benediction. Now, I used to love to say as you walk out these doors back there in McKinney Hall, but now as you leave this Zoom, may you go out with great joy because the one who suffered for us is still risen and he's filled us with his spirit. We can go out with great joy and be his witnesses in 2021. God bless you, church. We love you. Go in peace. And if you want to stick around for just a few seconds and wave at people before you go off the Zoom, Victor's going to keep strumming his guitar. But it's great to see you, church. We love you. And we hope to see you next week. God bless.